Jordan Peterson does a two hour long interview with Oliver Anthony who sang Richmond North of Richmond. And in this viral clip, he goes over a vision for Oliver Anthony's life and he misinterprets scripture at the same time doing it. Now, if you like this type of content, my name is Aaron. I do Christian commentary on culture. So hit the like, share, subscribe, notification bell if you kind of you know, like this kind of content. And with that out of the way, let's get right into the video here. That's the famous line, the people perish where there is no vision, the people perish. And that's literally the case because there's a bunch of reasons for that is if you have no vision, you have no well-developed aim. And if you have no aim, you have no direction. And that means you're lost. And if you're lost, you're anxious. And so then you're enveloped by anxiety. And then if you have no aim, you have no hope because hope is always experienced in relationship to an aim. And if if you're in a marriage or other collective and you have no collective aim, then you're in conflict because nothing unites you. And then, you know, when when my colleagues and I were developing the self-authoring program, one of the things... Okay, so he gets into like so what he's doing for developing vision in uh, people's lives like Oliver Anthony. However, Jordan Peterson is quoting actually a Bible verse. He says it's a famous line. It's actually a famous Bible verse from uh, Psalm 29. And I want to go over there uh, because this is what he's quoting. He's quoting the uh, King James Version. And as you can see here, um, this is Psalm 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now, uh, he's saying here, like this word vision, it's it's very, this is a widely misinterpreted scripture, and I thought I'd clarify it for you like quickly today, is that this verse is actually not about developing a vision for your future, like setting your own personal goals or uh, dreams or any of that stuff, and then you'll die if you don't achieve it. Actually, you have to take the whole verse in its context. This word vision right here in in Hebrew really means something like divine revelation. And when I say revelation, I mean divine like guidance or a divine uh, revealing or divine message. That's what that is, right? So it's like a message directly from God or from the divine. And then perish. This word perish here is interesting because that actually means loose. So maybe the connotation is like, uh, you live loosely or you run a little wild or you, you know, you kind of just like you, you, you get out of control. And so you have to take the Bible verse uh, for what it means. And so in the context of this is a new international version. So it's not the King James version, which is a little older and uh, maybe it could be misinterpreted. I found this uh, a little more helpful. This is um, this is a new uh, King or sorry, NIV, new international version where there's no revelation, right? And this revelation really means like uh, it's it's a, like a, a divine message from God. People cast off restraint, okay? So it's not that it's uh, you die, it's actually you're loosed or you live wild, okay? Uh, and and, and you, what, what really is happening here, if you interpret the Bible uh, at, its, at its best, in my opinion, uh, with Jesus behind all of it, you're really the the ultimate revelation of God's guidance and word and and will in your life and mine is actually found in the person and work of Jesus Christ. Okay, and so in John one we see that the word became flesh. Right, the word was in the beginning, and the beginning was the word, and that word became flesh. John one, and that flesh was Jesus Christ. So the word, the 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 living word of God, the ultimate picture of revelation from God is in the person and work of Jesus Christ. And so you, so there has to be Jesus in your life so that you don't live loosely or rather in sin or apart from God or wild or, or, or unrestrained. And then um, since we don't have Jesus with us physically here anymore, that uh, it becomes the written word of God. The, the other uh, source of the perfect revelation from God is found with the Bible, right? And and if you know anything about Oliver Anthony, you, you know that he's a devout Christian. Um, and so that's what where when God, when you want to hear from God, like a, a message from God, or, or you want to hear God talking to you, the clearest, I'm, I'm sure he could talk to you in visions and through other people and circumstances, but the clearest way that we could hear from God is in his in the Word in the in the Bible uh, is through that, and so you have to take the rest of this verse with it 
but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction, okay? And uh, that, I mean, you go back to Proverbs, but he who keepeth the law, happy is he. So happy is translated to bless, so that, that is that same phrasing. Or And who keeps the law, or who um, heeds wisdom's instruction, right? Those are the same notions like you're following in the footsteps, you're following God, you're, you're, uh, you're, you know, you're walking with God. And so that's what, that's more of that, what, what that means. It doesn't mean goals for your life or a vision, developing a vision for your life. Although it, that's, it, that's important because JP goes into that. Um, but yeah, so that, that's, that's what that means, right? So don't get confused. Although we are going to talk about developing a vision for your life with Jordan Peterson that really struck me to the core and them too was the fact that you know you said that for a joe schmo like you the self-authoring program was useful because it broke things down it's like well everybody needs that you know it took me 10 years of clinical work and training graduates and undergraduates to understand how to break down a vision of the future into its constituent steps and that's partly because we are stunningly bad at that in our culture you know, and I did some research into the history of the education system to find out why that was, because I thought, how the hell can we have an education system where I can have top rate students who've been through 15 years of school, who've never been sat down once and told, write a vision for your character and your life. And I found out that the education system itself, which was based on the Prussian military model, was designed, designed consciously by people who regarded themselves as fascists, this was in the late 1800s, who wanted to produce obedient workers who couldn't think for themselves. So, hey man, guess what? 150 years later, that's exactly what we've got. And it is a stunning fact that people are, aren't encouraged. Well, first of all, they're not encouraged at all. But second, specifically, they're not encouraged to take that time to dream and to say to themselves, look, okay, buddy, here's the deal. You can, you can assume that the world wouldn't object too dramatically if your life wasn't an absolute bloody catastrophe 100% of the time, and you could take a little time to develop a vision about what you wanted. Now, you So, yeah, so there's Oliver Anthony. So Jordan Peterson is basically, I, I want to get to this point, what Jordan Peterson's getting to. He's saying, why are we so bad at developing a vision for ourselves? Now he brings up the history of it, that it was made to enslave people uh, off of some like program or whatever. But I think it's a lot deeper uh, than that. I think at least I want to say three things. Number one, it's, it's hard to develop a vision for yourself. Number two, it's easy to find all the, you know, the hurdles uh, that, you know, <laughs> that the, come in your way. And then number three is you, how, how actually do we des design a vision? So number one, just briefly, like it's hard, it, it's hard to find something for you that, that, that formulate that vision. Look, I think when we say vision for our lives, I think it's easy and people often go to the financial aspect of it, right? I want a car, I want a house, I want to be climbing on a mountain, I want to be flying, jet setting, you know, alligator skin boots, woo, you know what I'm saying, gold chain, kiss stealing, wheeling, dealing, and and you that's that's the financial <clears throat> vision of your life, maybe it's like the network you have, I want a hot, smoking hot girlfriend, I want a lot of, you know, people around me, an entourage, I want to be famous, so essentially those are the two, however, we don't Ever, I, I really mean, I don't know of anyone who develops a vision for their character or their morality. Like, what kind of person do you want to be, like, on the inside? Uh, what kind of person do, do you want to be of moral character? Like, that's hard to envision, especially when you think, and especially as, as men, as most of the people who watch this as men, is that we think we're perfect the way we are. <laughs> you know, why develop a vision of a future me it, with, in character and morals because I'm currently perfectly moral and, and, and my character is, you know, sublime, right? <laughs> we get we fall into that trap and we don't realize like, no, 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 there, there's some broken parts of us. There's some sinful parts of us. Uh, and, and, and that's just a natural, I think, trap for, for men. Uh, also, like, what's our vision of ourselves emotionally, What's our vision of ourselves? How do we handle situations around us with, with poise, 
uh, throughout the chaos in, in our lives? Do we even have a vision for what that what we would look like as a stable, stoic, poised person in the middle of a storm and a chaos? Okay. And and then lastly, what do we look like? Do we have a vision for ourselves intellectually? Do we think that we can be smarter? Have an, a deeper understanding, have deeper insights. Sometimes we don't. And really it's hard to see that when we don't have uh, something to put ourselves against, right? I could have a vision financially because easier for myself because finances, that financial vision is is prevalent in our society today, but not the intellectual, not the certainly not the moral and, and the character vision that we could have for ourselves. So we don't have that backdrop against that, that we could aspire to and set a vision. We can't set a vision that we don't really have an example for. Number two is it's easy to see the difficulties of our life or, or the or the problems that we can incur before we hit that vision, right? So like if, like I'm I'm an anxious person, I got baggage, I have uh, I'm emotional, right? Like I'm out of whack, I'm I'm poor, I have no opportunities. These are all what's the barriers or problems that we could easily see and we could easily stack on and make excuses for ourselves to not achieve that vision or ideal uh, version of ourselves. So that's two. And then number three, I already said this, but I feel like it's super important to have an outside source that invades your space and gives you that vision. I, I didn't have a, I couldn't come up with a vision for my life until someone else told me in, 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 printed their vision for my life for me and then and then from there i could scale up and i could kind of piece together other visions of my life but we generally i mean i mean i don't know if you can do it but can you and this is a good question of the day can you develop a vision all on your own without any outside help or juxtaposition against it right could you do that and i i i don't think so but maybe do you agree with me do you agree with me that you you could do you need some outside help but we also need a second thing. We don't need an outside help to tell us that what we could be. But we also need an outside help to like humble us and bring us down. So we need an outside help to lift us up, to give us a vision for ourselves. And we need another outside help to, hey, bring us down to reality, right? There are problems. There are some things that are wrong with us that we could work on so that we could hit that vision. Because otherwise, we're in that mode where we think we are perfectly moral characters, have like the utmost character, have the utmost intelligence. We can't get a vision for, for ourselves if we don't understand our recurrent reality. So we need someone outside of us to bring us down to reality and to at simultaneously lift us up to a vision of that they imprint on us and i believe firmly that that's found in the bible in jesus christ that god does that for us brings us down as sinners lifts us up as children of god in the person of work of jesus christ i don't know if this is crazy to you let me know if you agree my name is aaron thank you so much for watching and be sure to check out some of my other videos that i did of jordan peterson especially i'll be doing more of him and oliver anthony so i'm really liking this content thanks so much for watching i'll see you in the next video